Welcome to the Kings of the Jungle podcast. I'm your host, Joe Chapman. Today, we are talking about training camp is coming up. Obviously, it's going to be today. We're going to be, we're recording on the Monday before training camp, but we will release it the night of training camp, pretty much close to the day of. So, just to get in broad spectrums. But when you look at the Detroit Lions and you look at the team and you look at the offensive battles that could be happening, with this Detroit Lions football team. Now, first, I want to get something off my chest. Well, not off my chest, but I want to tell you about something that you need to listen to. If you're a Detroit Lions fan, you need to listen to the Aaron Glenn interview with Adam Shafter. Very, very insightful. We'll kind of get into it in that on the defensive front, but it was very, very you know insightful about the scheme and about how he's going to use all the players. But when we look at the Detroit Lions offense, it has a lot more talent than last year. That's obvious. There's a lot more talent than last year. You know, you look at the quarterback position, that's a, that's a position of uh, weakness, in my opinion, because you got Jared Goff, who is a decent quarterback, but then you got a big, big, big drop-off when you look at the Tim Boyles and the David Blouse. Now, I've been told through sources that the Detroit Lions have been looking into getting, a, you know, maybe a look at a, another backup, but they want to see what they have at training camp. That is where they're going to try to get, you know, try to figure out what these guys are and if they've gotten better. I think Brad Holmes has taken a unique approach to it. You know, a lot of, a lot of GMs would have taken an approach where they have to get better, have to get better, have to get better, but then they, they spend a lot for a backup quarterback. And I think he was trying to avoid that. And if you look at the rookie class for QBs, there wasn't really a QB that you could draft who would be that much of a step up over, a Tim Boyle, or um, David Blau. Obviously, there's a Malik Willis. There's a lot of, you know, Sam Howell. But from my my view and from other people's view, especially in football, that there's not much of a step up, especially if Jared Goff goes down, there's really not much that you can kind of gain from putting a rookie in that position. One of the things I'm looking at for the Detroit Lions in on the offensive front is – the running back position. You know, when you look at the running back position, you look at their DeAndre Swift. You look at Jamal Williams. You look at um, Craig Reynolds, Jamar Jefferson. There's a lot of talent, but there's not enough talent, I think, because if you look at the Detroit Lions run game, you know, DeAndre Swift is, is has shown uh, unreliability to not stay healthy. You know, he's missed some time, missed some games. It's just the way it goes. It's not his fault. It's not anybody's fault. But, you know, Deuce Staley came out and said that he needs to play through some small injuries. And I think that was a sign that there were some injuries that DeAndre Swift could have played through, but he didn't. And when you look at DeAndre Swift, he has not, he hasn't been able to stay healthy, hasn't been able to finish a full season. Obviously, when you're running back, there's a lot of wear and tear that gets on you, but at some point, you need to stay healthy, and and if it's a, you know, a tweak here, a tweak there, you got to stay in the game and try to give your team the best chance to win. Obviously, you get when you have a guy like DeAndre Swift or a, a Delvin Cook who have a, the reliability to get injured, you have to have good depth. And the one thing I worry about with the Detroit Lions in that spectrum is when you look at the running back position, there is some a lot of unknowns. Craig Reynolds, Jamar Jefferson, Godwin Ukabuke, and Greg Bell. Now, I really think that Greg Bell could excel in this offense. I think he's a really talented back, the rookie out of San Diego State. I think that he's a guy that you need to look for in training camp and going into the preseason. I think he's going to make a lot of uh, a good plays. I think he's going to be that guy that you look at, at watch on hard knocks and you make – like you kind of make an emphasis that you'd want to watch this guy because he's actually a really good player. And if you go back and watch San Diego State, you know, film, he was a really powerful runner. He could explode through the tackles. He was a really good runner who um, he had some power to him, but he had he had some moves to him. And I was surprised the Detroit Lions got him as an undrafted free agent. And I think he has a really good shot to make the roster, in my opinion. And whose roster spot he takes. That's going to be the question because there's 
Jamar Jefferson, I expect another. I expect him to get better. I expect uh, Igubuque to get better, and I expect Craig Reynolds to get better. And with this offensive line, there's no reason you can't get better in this offense with this offensive line. You should be able to be a good running back with this offensive line with Taylor Decker, Jonah Jackson, Frank Ragnow, Vitae, and Penai Sewell. This is a very, very formidable line to run with if you're a running back. When you look at the wide receiver's position, it's easy. Obviously, Jameson Williams is, is going to be starting on the pop list, uh, not active, non-football you know, injury list. Um, but when you look at this, this, this wide receiver group, unlike last year, there's a lot of battles that are going to be happening. And when you look at a guy like Khalil Pimpleton, who is an underactive free agent, he's someone I would look forward to kind of steal some thunder because he does have some speed he's undersized at 5'9 but I think that he could be a guy who could take a roster spot if given the opportunity in reality though um, Quintess Cephas is healthy healthy DJ Chark is healthy we need to see them stay healthy but I'm looking for how does DeAndre how does this uh, wide receiver group kind of mesh together you know obviously they're all different skill sets um with you got a guy like Josh Reynolds who's a vertical kind of go up and get it. DJ Chark's a faster guy. Khalif Raymond's a faster guy. And you look at a guy like Quintus Cephas, and he's a kind of a big body guy who's going to body you up and try to get into the fold. On the tight end position, it's really it's really simple. You know, you look at the tight end position, and it's one of the positions I kind of am a little bit worried about. You got T.J. Hawkinson. Obviously, he's he's a, he's going to be your main starter. You're going to have Garrett Griffin. Um, he, I don't think you know he's a he's he may be a, just a long snapper. Nolan Given. He was a he's a rookie out of Southeastern Louisiana, and the and the six year vet De- Devin Funches, who has transitioned from wide receiver back to tight end, which is going to be interesting because he hasn't been a tight end since he played at the University of Michigan. So when you look at each DeAndre, you look at the tight end's position. One of the ways I kind of am looking at this is who's going to step out besides TJ Hawkinson? Who's going to be the guy who takes the next step and make sure that they kind of solidify themselves as a second tight end to TJ Hawkinson? Obviously, you know that um, Dan Campbell and the offensive coach staff wanted a tight end that's going to be able to block. And with tight with tight ends, you need to be able to block. And Dan Campbell was a tight end, so he can recognize all those skill sets. I'm interested to see how these these tight ends kind of fit into the fold. But I think the Detroit Lions are going to be a little bit limited on the tight end side. When we look at that offensive line, let's just be honest, this is a top five unit. Uh, I would say it's a top five unit by far. You look at Frank Ragnow. You look at Jonah Jackson, a Pro Bowl guard. You look at Taylor Decker. Penn I Sewell. All the all the ingredients are there. Can you just stay can these guys just stay healthy together? If they stay healthy together, you're looking at one of the best offensive lines in football. Vitae played pretty well last year, but we're looking for a better, you know, year from him. And if this offensive line is anywhere as good as it was or it's supposed to be, Jared Goff's going to have a lot of time, and there's going to be no excuses for Jared Goff because the offensive line is going to be actually be a strength of the offensive unit. And I'm looking forward to seeing Jared Goff move forward with this offense and seeing what he can do with an offensive line that can actually block, can actually run the ball, you know, run block. And it's going to be interesting because this is a top five unit. Again, I'm saying it's a top five unit. They need to be at the top of their level, but I need them to stay healthy. And that's one of the main things that you hope that through training camp, through preseason, the offensive line stays healthy, running backs stay healthy. You just want to stay healthy. I don't really care how they look. Just stay healthy until you get to the regular season and you will see how it works. We will move on to the defense in this next segment. So stay tuned to us and we will have your training camp defense kind of preview.